Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. This is uh, Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. Uh, we are in the 6th week lectures uh, in sequence it is, as it is the 30th lecture. Uh, we will have covered uh, relations between stress, strain, strain displacement, uh, all these relations we have covered. Now, it is time to solve problem, uh, but uh, theory of elasticity approach of solving problem is not, not very, very um, well appreciated problem for many. So, we need to think a lot uh, to, to solve those problems uh, and uh, people have spent uh, considerable time to find solution for those problems. Now, we are learning, probably learning is not uh, much difficult, much, not much uh, time consuming, but uh, it is. Uh, we are continuing with that. So, what we have done so far? We have uh, done uh, so far uh, in, in the elasticity portion uh, with help of the next slide we will discuss uh, as a recapitulation slide appears. It is uh, relating related to the whole uh, or whatever we have covered in our course till date starting with history of aircraft and aerospace structures or solid mechanics how people started it, how Leonardo da Vinci did his the first experiment and then slowly we have come across to many things and to the derivation of cell and other things. Now, uh, various types of uh, after that uh, we have discussed about various types of loads experienced by our uh, structure, the aircraft structure. In different condition, it experiences different type of load. When it is airborne, it is not only the loads coming from air and the engine it, is, it experiences, it also experiences uh, body forces or the inertia forces because of uh, the movement maneuver we say there. So, man, for maneuvering uh, different type of g forces comes and that is popularly known as that how much g it can withstand or the body force it is experiencing. So, with respect to that uh, in correlation to g we have also come across to the flight envelope. A flight envelope is the envelope uh, for which uh, we, we, we define uh, uh, how much a structure uh, should withstand, how much g a structure should withstand and uh, it, it, it varies from, from uh, aircraft to aircraft, a type of aircraft definitely for a um, aerobatic aircraft or a fighter aircraft uh, the g experienced is much more than a, 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 an agricultural aircraft or a civil aviation aircraft or maybe a glider one. So, uh, keeping in mind those uh, maneuver uh, difficult maneuvers and experience of G, a flight envelope is generally prepared and those flight envelope uh, guides us for the design. Now, after that uh, bending moment shear force diagram what you have uh, done for different beams uh, probably in your mechanics course uh, for cantilever simply supported uh, many, many, many more. Uh, we have uh, done those things shear force and bending moment diagram for wing and fuselage. We have considered those uh, separately and we have solved uh, uh, typical problems in association to that. We have come across then, then learned the truss structures. In truss structure, we have uh, solved landing gear problems uh, in relation to truss and not only landing gear problem there are many other three dimensional structures available inside the aircraft. 
So, those uh, we may also solve using the approach what we have learned and then we have uh, started discussing the stress strain relations uh, theory of elasticity all those points uh, stress uh, strain uh, in the first week class we have defined stresses we have defined equilibrium equations uh, we have defined uh, transformation of stresses how do we transform for stresses stresses from one plane to the other and during that transformation we found that there is a plane where shear stress is equals to 0 or in a better way we should say there are three planes orthogonal planes where shear stresses are 0 and the normal stresses in those planes are known as the principal stresses. Those principal stresses uh, follow some, some certain set of invariant property we have three invariants stress invariants and similarly we have strain invariants also but strain invariants we have not discussed uh, it is given uh, you as a scope to to explore on your own or the principal principal strain properties all those things uh, i would suggest you explore on your own and uh, you may go into that but after that the most important thing what we have derived is uh, related to the strain displacement relation. The strain displacement relation we have derived uh, from the tensor calculus approach or with considering vectors and tensors and then uh, we got uh, the complete um, equations of strain displacement including the nonlinear terms. Then in the last class uh, we have uh, considering the only the linear part we have come across to the complete compatibility equations. Compatibility equations are important for unique solutions and that has to be maintained. Uh, so, so we, we have learned what are the equations and uh, we need to uh, we need to satisfy those uh, conditions for any uh, analysis. Then uh, the stress strain relations that we are probably already introduced to we have uh, got some relations and with that scenario let us move forward for today's topic. Today's topic or this lectures topic is a uh, formulation of elasticity problem. So, uh, let us look into it how the elasticity problems are formulated formulation of elasticity problems uh, for a 3D body. So, um, we have uh, we are continuing with the uh, formulation of elasticity problem for a 3D body problem in elasticity uh, we have uh, 3 equations of equilibrium, 6 equations for strain displacement, 6 equations for stress strain relations, total 15 relations we have we need to solve 6 stresses, 6 strains, 3 displacements sigma, epsilon, uvw or xyz. And uh, that is also total 15. So, now we are ready with our um, status to solve it, how to solve that is what we will cover now. An elasticity problem can be solved however, exact solutions are only obtained for some simple problems here lies the key. People have tried uh, a lot to solve all the problems using this mathematical approach uh, and uh, it is really difficult to solve uh, using this math mathematical approach all the problems. Uh, there are a few problems that people have tried uh, uh, and solved and those we will learn and there are two basically ways of uh, solution. One is uh, solving the three displacement first uh, and then solving the uh, stresses. The other is the reverse way, but uh, those we will learn, but this actually this as the statement st stated here that actually uh, initiates the, the process of uh, approximate solution and uh, modern day computational uh, solution process. 
So, involving finite element method uh, not only finite element method finite element method is the probably the first method that is why people say always finite element method there are many other methods similar methods like uh, boundary element methods and so on. So, those approximate methods are invented uh, and uh, using um, these conditions satisfied uh, these conditions satisfied for a smaller domain uh, they go for the larger domain analysis and using computers and uh, modeling of those solids in a even if it is complicated we can solve uh, those problems find out solutions for that and uh, we cannot solve find out solutions for all problems following the elasticity approach. But the question may come why then do we need to learn if it is not uh, able to solve. Because the approximate methods what just now I said most popular is finite element method nowadays probably people are uh, more referring more with the commercial names uh, those things. But uh, fundamental basis of those are also this theory of elasticity. From here uh, using some functional analysis approach uh, or uh, some approximate method approach like the Rayleigh Ridge method or some other functional analysis approach, we get the basic equations for the smallest unit and then we assemble those units and get the approximate solutions. So, how good we approximate the displacement behavior from the theory of elasticity point of view that gives us how accurate we are in finding the solution. Anyway, uh, let us move forward. Two classes of problems usually we need to determine three unknown displacements or six unknown stresses. Whatever we do, we can do the other using the relations whatever we have in our hand. We have 15 relations is not it. In the first category this category problems in the first category problems equilibrium equations are written in terms of strain by expressing 6 stresses as function of strains. Equilibrium equ equations are written uh, in terms of strain. The strain displacement relations are then used to form three equations involving three displacements u, v and w. The boundary conditions for this method of solution must be specified as displacement. So, in this approach this is the way uh, we solve after finding u, v and w we can then obtain 6 strains from strain displacement equations and we find 6 unknown stresses from the stress strain equations. Note that compatibility is not being used. However, u, v and w are determined directly and they ensure that they are singular valued functions. So, with this uh, note um, as I have already said unless uh, u v w are having single valued function we cannot do that is the reason in many cases after going through the elasticity course many people say that what is the need of compatibility equation. Because the type of problem we solve that those are already solved by famous physicists and scientists and they have already satisfied the conditions of compatibility we generally many times is, uh, skip though that part we do not show that it is satisfying the compatibility condition. But that does not mean that it, it is not required to be satisfied. So, please keep it in mind compatibility has to be satisfied. So, with that note we move forward to have some more discussion on that solution process. In a structural problem our objecti objective is to find the stress distribution in an elastic body 
produced by an external loading system. In this case, it is usually more convenient to determine six stresses first before calculating any required strain or displacement. This is done as follows. So, write six equations of compatibility in terms of stresses. So, in the second approach to find the stresses first, we need to write the compatibility in terms of stresses. That is what uh, we will try to do, try to see. Uh, and to do that, what we do is simply recall first the equations uh, of stress and strain, six equations we have. The resulting equations or equations are then simplified by making use of the strains relationships developed in the equation of equilibrium. The solution of these equations automatically satisfy the condition of compatibility and equilibrium throughout. So, let us see how do we do compatibility in terms of stresses. Again to make it simpler to understand it properly, we have uh, reduced our domain. We have uh, come, uh, come to the two dimensional problem, two dimensional case of uh, plane stress or strain, plane stress or strain will be solving. So, uh, in this uh, first to consider plane stress in today and strain will be discussed in the le next lecture. So, in, in case of plane stress as we have uh, already uh, said that in the z direction all the stress components are 0 that is sigma z z equals to sig 0 and tau x z tau y z are also equals to 0. If we put this condition to equilibrium equation, it reduces to this x y are the surface forces, stress, stress and relation also reduces to this and compatibility. <coughs> this is uh, also uh, with substitution of the other relations, we can have uh, the stress and directly with res respect to the g uh, is something like this and then we find uh, that although f z z exists compatibility equations are satisfied leaving this equation only. So, uh, if we substitute all these values and the compatibility equations even though the, there is a value of f z z uh, we can uh, we come across only to this equations to satisfy that is uh, del 2 gamma x y del x del y is del 2 psi y del x 2 del 2 psi x del y 2. And then substituting for strain here if we substitute all these strain components, what we have a relation uh, it is again I have skipped that part uh, I did not find it uh, simply copying pasting the equations and to show you. I would suggest you simply substitute these equations and uh, get, get the equations uh, here, substitute in this here and get this equation here. And then if we move forward with this equation, what we have we need to use the remaining one is not it. So, the equilibrium equation, the remaining equilibrium equations 2 and 3 what we have uh, that we can see and that is taken a derivative this is substituted this this notation is only changed the here it is sigma there it is tau is used please uh, keep it in mind that no not a new equation here and that uh, one more derivation is considered and uh, simply rearrangement is done and then those values are substituted in the equation 1 after adding these two so what what we we do we add first these two equations and we get the equations at tau x y with, with respect to the boundary conditions the x and y. And then if we substitute these two in equation 1, we have a relation which is this that is del 2 del x 2 plus del 2 del y 2 
sigma x x plus sigma y y is equals to minus of 1 plus nu del x del y del x sorry del capital X del x del capital y del y. So, this is uh, compatibility in the in terms of stresses. So, with this note uh, which is the second approach to find out the stresses we conclude we will also find out in case of plane strain how these equations uh, are modified and then we will try to solve a few problems in, in the next uh, lecture. So, the reference slides it is as usual it is a combination of the books uh, I, I am sorry I cannot pinpoint for a lecture which book is followed. So, formulation of elasticity problem is discussed in this lecture to some extent and uh, probably you have come across you have learned uh, the process followed to solve uh, a elasticity problem and uh, with that note uh, I thank you for attending this lecture and uh, we will meet again in the next class to solve a few problems. Thank you.